Hi there, friends of the USBGF. This is Phil Simborg, <clears throat> the USBGF Teaching Pro, with a tip about a racing cube. Uh, Red is leading 3 to 1 in a match to 5. And the way I set my screen gamut is to show the away score. I don't know if you can see it, but it says 2 away, 4 away, which is a very tricky score. And the question is, Red's on roll, should he double? Well, this came up in a match um, the other day, and my opponent asked me afterwards uh, what the right cube action is and how do I know? Well, I can't teach all of that in this short video because there's a lot to know here, but one of my favorite expressions is you don't know what you don't know, and if you can figure this out and make an accurate cube decision for both red and blue, then great, you've already learned how to do this. But if you don't know how to accurately make this decision, now you know something you don't know and you need to learn it. Well, what do you need to learn here? Well, the first thing you need to learn in all cube decisions is what are the take points? What is blue's take point here? What would make blue, what percentage of wins does blue have to have in order to take this cube? Then you'd have to know how to figure out what percentage you win here. And the way I do it is by using the Keith count in positions like this. And there's other formulas as well, but Keith count works pretty good for me. There's Trice, and there's Kleinman, and there's Ward, and there's EPC. Uh, but I pretty much in these kinds of positions use Keith. I know people like my good friend and uh, uh, teaching partner, John O'Hagan, he might use two or three different formulas on the same position to be sure. Uh, but he can do that very, very well and quickly over the board, unlike very many people in the world. Um, but in this position, I would use the Keith count. And believe it or not, with the Keith count, I can come pretty close. And in this position, I can come up to an exact count. Uh, so uh, first of all, what's the take point for blue? How do you figure that? Well, it's risk over risk plus reward. If you know the match equities, you can come up with it. But uh, you can also memorize it. And I happen to know it's 18.56. You can check that. That is take point is 18.56. You go to Analyze, Cube Information, and you'll see that Blue's take point is 18.56. You can ignore the dead cube take point because that's the take point if it was the last roll of the game. Any time other than the last roll of the game, if Red, if I'm sorry, if Blue takes this cube, he's certainly going to redouble immediately to four. Why would he leave the cube at two when his opponent only needs two points to win the match and he needs four? So if he takes the cube, he would redouble immediately. Therefore, his take point is the same as what his equity would be if he dropped the cube. If he just dropped this cube, he would be losing one away, four away, Crawford. And his chances of winning the match, he'd have to win three games in a row, which is about 12.5% odds. Plus, he has a chance to win a gammon along the way, and that brings him up to about 18.56. So that's his odds if he dropped, so he would take any cube that he could win more than 18.56 of the time. Now, does he win this game more than 18.56 of the time? Very hard to say unless you've got some kind of a good formula. The Keith works. Uh, as you can see, this is a 75-79 pip race. Red's only up by four, but it's deceptive because the distribution favors red. Blue's got some real problems with distribution. The open four point, the stack of extra checkers on the one point, and when you use the Keith count, it makes adjustments for that. To make a long story short, if you use the Keith count properly, you'll get an adjusted Keith count of 82 to 81, with red having 82 and blue having 81. Now we know that if red's count is 2 over, he would have about 22%, and we know that 1 over is about 20%, so blue's winning chances here, according to the Keith count, are around 20%. And Keith might be off by a percent or two here and there, but usually it's pretty good. So if blue has 20% and his take point is 18.56, we know that blue should take. Should red double? Well, clearly, red can easily lose his market. Blue's only got 1.5% cushion between his winning odds and his take point. And there's so many market losers for red. If red rolls a 9 and blue rolls an 8, it's probably going to be a drop. Or if red rolls a 5 and, and blue rolls a 4, probably going to be a drop. It just just loses his market way too much and he's so close to the take point that you've got to double. And of course one of the advantages of doubling is a human being may not know that he has 20% and he may drop. And if he gets a drop then he loses this game without any risk at all because the game is over when his opponent mistakenly drops. So you can check the Keith count as well. Remember I said that it was 82-81? 
Let's take a look. Analyze race formulas. Keith count, 87, 86. The difference was, I'm sorry, I said it was 87, 86. The difference is one pip difference, which means about 20%. And this would be a double and a take. Let's see what Extreme Gammon says. It's a double. It's a take. Winning chances right on the button, 20%. Lots of people, when they're two away, are never giving the cube until it's way too late and they've lost their market. That's one big mistake that many people make when they're two away. Another mistake they make when they're two away from winning is they drop every cube. They're afraid to take anything when they're losing and that's a big mistake. Red's take point here is 19.8%. If there's no gammons involved, you should take any cube where he can win more than 19%. So if blue were the one that was two away here, and he was being doubled, he would have a take also, because he's got over 19% and his gammons are zero. So these numbers are critical to know, and being able to find a way to estimate winning percentage is critical to know as well. I uh, hope you learned something from this. If nothing else, maybe you learned some things you don't know that you need to find out. You can find them out. They're in books, articles, teachers, mentors. You have to study to learn this game. You will not learn it by playing. Uh, and by the way, I hope you enjoy learning as much as you enjoy playing because that's what's going to make learning fun and that's what's going to make you a better player and that's what's going to make you win more and I don't have to tell you how much fun that is. Bye-bye.